Ladies and gentlemen, Aubrey Rowland. Hello. So, for me, one of the greatest epiphanies that I've ever had occurred in sixth grade. A little background information. In sixth grade, I was not the best student. I didn't really care about what I was learning. I didn't try on my exams. I didn't read any of the assignments that I was given. I didn't do any of the problems that were assigned to me for homework. And so, as you can imagine, my grades weren't really that great. So, the end of first quarter comes, and my report card comes back barely passing most of my classes, borderline failing, but even then, I didn't really care. So, everything was just the same. Then, one day though, I went into math class, and after class, my math teacher pulled me aside and told me, Aubrey, if you don't start doing better in this class, I'm gonna have to put you into a lower math class. And, don't ask me why, I have no idea how this happened, but, it was like a lightning bolt just went through me, and I had this sudden realization that if I don't do well in this class, do well in all my other classes, I'm not gonna go finish high school, I'm not gonna go to college, I'm not gonna get a job, I'm not gonna have a career, I'm not gonna have a family, and I'm gonna die alone. So, don't ask me why I think like that, I just do. So, yeah. And so I realized I have to start doing better. Now, the way I thought I could do that was by mimicking other students who were actually doing well. And all those other students really cared about what they were learning. But I didn't have that sort of internal passion at that time, so I had to find it from external sources. The one place that I thought I could really get it from, other than you know listening to my teachers and parents, was from posters. I don't know if any of you guys have ever looked around the hallways of our schools, but there are plenty of inspirational posters, like, science is interesting, history is fun. One poster that isn't there, though, that I think should be, is put your cell phone away. This is school. Because I have been to class too many times where students are taking out their phones, not only just texting, but taking selfies. It's 7.30 in the morning. You do not need to be taking a selfie, posting it to Instagram, hashtag flawless, has, hashtag I woke up like this, hashtag B is queen. First of all, everyone knows that B is queen. That's just a general fact, okay? Yeah. Another thing is the tweeting, all right? You do not need to tweet at 7.30 in the morning Oh, 7.30 in the morning, hate my life, I'm so tired, hashtag KMS, hashtag HMU. No, that is so unnecessary. It's 7.30 in the morning, we are going to assume that you're tired. Any being that is awake at 7.30 in the morning is going to be tired. Thank you, there's no need for it, alright? Especially for high school students. High school students are some of the most sleep-deprived children, not children, but growing adults, whatever, in the world, okay? So I'm going to assume that you're tired, there's no need for you to tell me. You know what would be post-worthy? Would be saying, it's 7.30 in the morning, I'm fully refreshed and ready to learn at school. S-C-H-O-O-L. Not S-K-O-O-L, I don't know where that came from, it's wrong, that's not how you spell the word school, no need for it, okay? Thank you. All right, but can I get an amen for the fact that students are sleep deprived? Come on. Thank you. So, what these students need is a little inspiration a little passion. So getting back to my story. I brought these posters with me everywhere I went. Any class, I would sit down and any time that I felt distracted or I felt really disinterested in what I was learning, I would just put up one of those posters and I would focus more and it worked. I did better in my classes. The weird thing though is that after a while, about two years, those posters started to dissolve and they moved further back into my mind. I didn't need them as much. And then eventually, they just dissipated altogether. And it was at that point that I realized I had the passion within me, that I had the drive to learn. It was no longer something that I needed an external force for, it was an internal force. And that was good. But the only problem was that math, if you don't have a good foundation and you start caring later on, that's no help because if you don't have a good foundation in math, you just can't do well, that's just a fact. So I had to go back, and I had to relearn everything. The way I did that was I asked a friend who was really good at math, Blanca. She told me that she did Kumon. For those of you who know Kumon, 
it is pretty difficult. It's pretty much torture, okay? It's open 365 days a year, pretty much, because they give you work accordingly for every single day of vacation that you take, all right? You can imagine. But I realized that if I could do that, I would be not only doing well in math, but I would have proven that the passion within me was truly there, that it wasn't some external force. Because if you can learn for 365 days a year, you are truly passionate about what you're doing, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I did it, finished the program in three and a half years, which is pretty good. It was the fastest at the center, either center. And therefore, I was able to do well in math. And last year, actually, I was able to take two math classes and so that I could take calculus this year, and I did well in all those classes. So without this epiphany that I had in sixth grade, not only would I not have done all that, but I wouldn't be going to a university as great as Johns Hopkins. And so I'm really grateful for that.